Thanks, Arthur. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's a really, really uh, honor to be here for the first time. <laughs> super happy and super excited. Can you hear me well? Everything is, is good. Can you see my screen too? Yes. yes. Awesome. Great. Um, well, as Arthur already mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about WebXR. Um, the, the name of the talk is WebXR 101, uh, making reference to the first class you'll have uh, for, for an, a signature in, your, in the school or something like that. So um, let me start the presentation here. Who's this guy? Well, my name is uh, Daniel, Daniel, uh, as, as you want to pronunciate, Vega. I'm a lead software engineer in Subsurf. Uh, right now I'm located in Mexico. Um, you know, as, mm, as you might, might know, Mexico, it's a, a brand new country that we're opening. So it's super, super excited to, to be part of the community this for the first time and, and now participating from, from this office. Super, super uh, good thing for, for, for the development of the skill sets here in, in, in the new office. Um, I was also leading the advanced technology uh, division of Facebook Dev Circles here in Guadalajara, which is the city where I'm, I'm located at. Uh, before the pandemic, we had a lot, a lot of efforts. Uh, I was an evangelist for Facebook technology, uh, especially on the uh, XR um, capabilities like AR with Spark and virtual reality with Oculus and, and some cool stuff that we were going to see here in the talk. Uh, but uh, since the pandemic came and the, the company became uh, to Meta instead of Facebook, uh, so mm, technically we, 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 uh, we closed the, the circle because of, of lack of uh, and the transition, the lack of uh, resources bringing here to, to Guadalajara. But the, the next steps is to reopen the circle, the depth circles, but now under Meta and continue working with this cool stuff. And I'm also a Spark creator. Um, uh, I would work in like in my hobbies uh, to build filters and to build technology for Spark AR, which we're going to see also in this um, in this talk. Uh, there's my, my mail, so you can uh, uh, send a message or you can send a, a look for me in the, in the chat and Teams, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, so today the talk will be in four parts. Basically, uh, what's what, what's uh, what is WebXR? We're going to talk about augmented reality a little bit because we're going to focus on uh, what uh, like what's the most um, exciting technology for WebXR uh, with React. So that's that's a cool thing. I don't know if you guys have um, worked with this before, like with augmented reality and virtual reality, and also work with uh, these technologies in web. It's super, super cool thing and super interesting. And what are next steps? So this is a, brand, um, a standard that the, uh, the W3C and the consortium is working on. So it's still under revision. There's a lot of things new. Uh, there's a lot of things that they're in beta, in alpha. So we're going to see uh, more and more things um, when we're like working with this across the, the years ahead. Um, feel free to um, interrupt and ask questions. If not, we will have a session at the end. But technically, what it's uh, WebXR, XR stands for VR and AR. So it's like just an X, it's like just like a placeholder for, for the platform that we're using. Basically, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality in web. Um, we know that there's a lot of hardware out there. There's a lot of uh, cool efforts to bring virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, but this is specifically of um, built on top of the things that we already know, right? Like web development, mobile development, usage of mobile capabilities such as camera, accelerometer, et cetera. So this is a, a really, really cool thing because we don't need to know Unity. We don't need to know uh, Unreal Engine. We don't need to, to know any of those things. We just need to know JavaScript and HTML and CSS, and that's it. That we can start work with that because it's on web. Um, so this is for uh, creating immersive web experiences, such as games, um, learning, uh, video experience. Uh, also, um, e-commerce platforms. They're um, like putting some efforts using uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, I, I worked for a company uh, in US uh, that 
we were building, they, they, they were selling fine jewelry. So they were building an augmented reality experience to check out rings, how the rings will look like in your hand before you can buy it or before you can go to the, to the store, right? Um, so that was a kind of the efforts that they're really worth to invest in because they're based in web and you know we, we can have uh, better support because we all know these technologies, right? So it's about creating these experiences and we'll have eventually new device integration. Like uh, you can put this, and we'll see it in the next slide. You can put this technology or this, uh, these experiences in an Oculus, in HTC Vive, in Google Cardboard, in PlayStation, they are, and so, et cetera. So it's a really cool, cool thing that we have across, across uh, different platforms. So basically the standard, what it says is like for phones, for desktops, for uh, standalone AR headsets and standalone VR headsets, we will have WebGL, right? WebGL is the standard of how to render 3D models and 3D stuff in, in a browser. And also the AR core, which is a new thing that it's basically the same as WebGL is standard, allows you to use the camera of the device and then render 3D stuff using the algorithms and all the patterns that, that uh, the augmented reality works and how, how it works in other platforms. So basically, uh, what are the benefits of WebXR? As I already mentioned, you will have a, compact, a full compatibility with all browsers. And it's an instant deployment. So you don't need to, to 3D render uh, complex stuff or you, you don't need to do like um, some process to deploy this stuff. As soon as you can just bundle the stuff, get into a web server and that's it, that's your deploy. So it's an instant deployment and also has full compatibility with all hardware. And eventually we'll get more hardware. The hardware is getting updated. We're getting new versions of Oculus eventually. We're getting new versions of the Vive. Um, there's a lot of companies that they're building glasses. So basically, uh, this um, standard will allow you to uh, be transparent on those transitions on hardware. Uh, you can uh, use Google Cardboard, for example, for, to build an experience, and you can same the, you can have the same experience in PlayStation Seven or Eight VR in in some years. So that's that's a cool thing that we have. Um, uh, since it's uh, based on WebGL. We have full support of the community and there's some consortium that they're building new stuff for this. So we will have a lot, a lot of support in case we, we need that. Um, I will start working briefly with uh, augmented reality. I'll have a, a, a brief demo up with Spark. I don't know if you guys know Spark. If you know Spark, uh, that's a, you know that it's a cool thing to build filters for Instagram, Facebook. You can even export them to include them in Snapchat or TikTok or other platforms. So it's, it's super, super cool to do it. And I, um, I want to talk about some, something called AWS Sumerian and my, ex my own personal experience. I lived in the US and when I get there, um, I had a, an empty apartment. So I, I, all, all I have is the, the keys and a white box, right? <laughs> it was my, my, my apartment. So I had to get some furniture. So I realized that in US, I'm not sure if this is in, in other countries because I haven't traveled that much. <laughs> but uh, in US, you have this application from, from Amazon and you can buy your furniture, but you can actually see how the furniture will look like in your apartment before you can even buy it. So that's super, super cool because I could like build my home <laughs> using just my phone. And uh, you can just rotate, you can place the, the, the chair or the sofa or your bed in, in the space that you'll have. And it's super, super cool because it's super transparent for the final user. You don't have to know complex stuff about math, uh, uh, metrics or uh, things that you need to know in, in terms of technical perspective. So uh, any person can actually build this. And this is super cool because AWS Sumerian is one, it's one of the enterprise um, efforts to build virtual reality and augmented reality for all platforms. Um, it allows you to build experiences and also deploy it using uh, th their own APIs. So it's super, super, super cool. If you have a, like um, an account, an AWS account, or you can um, just go to the, to the docs and you can build um, a Hello World in AWS Sumerian, and you can include this in all types of platforms and applications. 
So this is our, our work um, to, to check it out, just like a, a hobby. Or if in your projects or in your, uh, I don't know, pet projects or in your with your clients, you can actually propose this as an enterprise solution because you have all the LWS uh, platform in the back as a backup. Um, but now I'll, I'll talk about Spark AR, which is a platform built from Facebook, right now Meta. Uh, it's to build experiences, but mostly for filters. This is more useful for filters. You have um, like full integration with your uh, Facebook accounts. So you can export this as a filter for Facebook, Instagram, uh, Messenger, etc. And you can export them, as I mentioned, and just put it in, every, in, in, in any um, social media network that you want. So uh, I'll, I have a quick demo. I will open the, the studio real quick here. Here have. Please let me know if, oh, if it's big enough. Oh, I can just click this. Okay. Um, this is the, like the home of the Spark AR Studio. Um, you need a Facebook account to actually log in and start creating stuff. So as soon as you log in, you'll have this screen. Basically what it is, is uh, you have your new, um, like create new projects, but you have a lot of templates here that uh, the community already built. So you can have sunglasses, you can have a rainbow, you can have like, and not only for you for a filter for your face, but you can create some things for for uh, like uh, using a table or your for hands uh, or other. They're constantly building new new trackers for different things. Right now, the most common thing is for it's for the face and um, to to use it in a, like in a surface. So basically, you have some uh, templates here. Let's use this guy. Okay, uh, so right away I have a, a Daniel here with some sunglasses. I'm not wearing sunglasses, but it's, it's like super cool. Uh, and, and this is the studio. You can start looking onto here. You have your, uh, your device settings and all, everything, all the assets that you will uh, be working with here. You have different materials. You can create different texture, textures, uh, shades, uh, you can also do scripting. Uh, I don't know, probably it, you, you've seen these filters before. Like if you blink, the, the filter do something. Uh, you have to stop a clock in certain like seconds or something like that. So that's super cool because you can build rich um, uh, filters with functionality, not only like a pair of sunglasses. Uh, so you can like get um, some like templates here. There are some tutorials online so you can build your own things. And I will do another another stuff. I will just create a blank project, super super quick. I don't know if you can see here and the and the left. I don't know if it's too small. Well, uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so basically what I'm going to do, I'm, I will uh, show you how to, in three steps, how to do something with my face. And it's super, super easy. So you click here in the plus icon and you uh, uh, get a face tracker. So right now, I don't know if you can see this in, the, in this uh, section here, but now there's a, a, an, a, some axis in my face. Mm -hmm. If I move, yeah. so I can see now the axis. So this is the tracker. So uh, what I'm going to do right now, I will create a, a material. Well, I, I'll, I'll create a, a face mesh first because I, I need the, the studio to track my face and to create a mesh around my, my, uh, my eyes, my nose, my mouth. So right now I'm, uh, I'm just like uh, a creepy thing here. Um, real quick, I'll, I'll create a material. Um, and I will assign this material to the face mesh. So now I'm in white. And using the material, I will create a texture. Oh. 
I will just uh, create, uh, choose something from my, like an, an image. And there you go. I created a face tracker. I created a mesh to actually match my, my, my facial, um, like map my, my, uh, yeah, my eyes and my nose and my mouth. And then to this material, I just assign it a texture, which is this weird mustache and weird thing. <laughs> so <laughs> how to embarrass yourself, it, it should be the name of the, of the, of the talk. But as you can see, and you can um, create uh, using Blender, using Maya or any 3D uh, or any uh, image uh, editor. So you can create different images and then you can just play around with this stuff. And you can export this and you can uh, create some reels or some uh, TikToks of some videos, some funny videos for your, for your friends and family. So it's, it's super, super cool. Um, we'll just call this guy. Oh, oh, I don't want to save it. So yeah, uh, just take a look at, with that and it, it, it should be a, a, a fun experience. Now talking about virtual reality, um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of things, a lot of hardware out there. I think this, this is the part of XR, which we have more options in the market. Basically, we have a lot of things standalone. We have things to handle your phone. We have things with two um, like controllers, things with only one controller, uh, the Samsung Gear, the HTC Vive, PlayStation VR, uh, Oculus, the Oculus Go, Oculus Max, and new things to come um so basically the cool thing about vr in web is that we have a lot of libraries but one of the most complex and one of the most like robust libraries in the market right now is a frame which is built on top of um uh, webjl and this uh, library is maintained by the mozilla foundation so i open i have the, the page here open you can go to aframe.io and you can check it out. A lot of cool things. Uh, they, they, they build this in, um, using JavaScript and WebGL, which is pretty cool. Um, so you have a lot of examples here. You have uh, like, let me see, 3D images. Like this is Puy uh, de uh, Sansi Uh You have also 3D videos, examples. So you have a lot of, oh, let me see if I can see it. I'll move around. So you have a lot of examples there, so you can see how they're built. Uh, you have also examples for um, headsets with uh, inputs or with controllers. Uh, you have uh, like the, the painter application, which you can like just create some drawings, right? This is uh, some guy fighting with a demon or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is one of the libraries that I, I, I wanted to showcase to you. Um, definitely feel free to, to go to the, to the page and, and check the examples. You can download, um, you can very check if you, go to the source, you have the examples here, and you can just download the the, um, the minified version of the A-frame and start like checking out, right? Oh. But my favorite part of XR, uh, WebXR, is that we have a tool built on top of uh, React that we can use called React. Uh, XR. In the very beginning, it was React VR. I, I participated on the first version of the of, of this tool. We were using class-based React. It, this was around 2017. Then uh, Facebook deprecated it and uh, it started to build React 360. We started to check out new capabilities and um, uh, giving support to React Fiverr for the next uh, the next versions, but. It only lasts for two years because it was in 2018 and uh, 2020, it got deprecated React 360 because they, they realized and the Facebook team realized that they needed like to do more with React, not only VR. So they created React XR, 
which has now uh, capabilities to do augmented reality using cameras, using uh, accelerometers and some um, device uh, features that we can just explore a new whole um, world of solutions using the um, React as a base. So basically the, 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 the tech stack is um, in the base we have WebJL, which is the standard, right? On top, we have a 3JS library, which is a, a set of uh, tools to help you to build uh, 3D models and 3D stuff and 3D rendering. Then you have React 3 Fiber, which is the actual base of this new framework. Which you have Dre, which is a collection of hooks to help you out with functionality. And of course, the React XR. Uh, the, the, the cool thing about React is like uh, you have the same structure, the same folder and file structure as you will have in a normal web project. And you can reuse this um, like functionality. You can put uh, hooks, context API, Redux, Reflux. You can do a lot of cool things that you will normally do in a web-based project using React XR. And this is specific module right here. Um, so, mm, this is an XYZ axis uh, system. So you're uh, in this uh, zero, 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 the, like right in the start of the of this axis uh, system, and you have a cubic map on your top. So you have uh, you can include three hundred and sixty images, three hundred and sixty uh, videos, and the the system or the platform will know how Sorry. to render stuff. <laughs> Sorry, <Siri. laughs> um, the this um, the system will know how to render stuff for you. Uh, and inside the system, you'll have meters. We know in the browser, we have pixels, we have uh, RAMs, AMs, points. In this uh, case, we'll have meters. You'll assume that all the measurement will be in meters and in degrees. We don't have radians here, but you will have degrees. You can uh, like um, um, use things in, in degrees in order to uh, rotate them in a certain way using this axis system. Um, and I, I also have a demo here. Um, I will quickly I have my console here. It's basically an NPM start. Uh, we don't have any spe like anything special. Oh, something that I forgot to mention is React 360, VR, XR, whatever, it's using the same technology as React uh, Native. So, and it's using the same syntax. So in React 360 uh, or, or VR now, we don't have uh, div, table, anchor tags. We have the semantic stuff, but we have the component way to, to do it as in React Native. And, and uh, as a base, we have the Metro Bundler, which is the, the, the this toolkit that help us to get uh, the web and the JavaScript stuff to, in, in this case, will be WebJL and um, 3JS um, like directives to do the, the, the experience. Uh, so I have my, as you can see, let me show you my console. It's just a quick, um, quick NPM start. Uh, it will allow you to, let me, it's bigger. It will allow you to start all, like all this in, in your local machine. No, 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 I'm sorry. Your local machine and, and the port 8081. Uh, so I'll copy this guy here and I'll paste it out here. And all of a sudden we have a 3D image. And I have a memory game built on top of React. And I'll show you the code right now, but it's just like a basic memory game. So you can just click here and look for pairs. Uh, it's super, super simple. Oh, look, I have a pair. I'm a scoring. I have a, a score one. I have a health bar. So if I run up or tries, I get a game over stuff. So you can see the health bar is changing color. Uh, it's, um, it's like a real, real game built in, in, in VR. I, I wanted to upload this to a, like a, a server so you can like actually play around using, if you have a headset or in your phone or something like that. But I had, you know, clients and I had not enough time to do so. 
but I will do it after this and you can just check it out. I will send the, the link for it and you can start a new game. So as you can see, it's a fully functional game uh, built in React um, using the WebJL capabilities in, in, the, like in the framework of WebXR. So I'll show you the, the code, how it's built real, real quick. So you can see that it's super simple. I'll stop for a little bit here. So this is my folder structure. Um, we have an index as we normally would, you know, this is the, the main entry point for everything, uh, which I have like, if this is my app.js in like in quotes, uh, as it's representing my, my app.js of a web uh, project. Uh, you can see I have here the, this is a, a class base because I was using uh, React 360 but I have my state, which handles all the information for my game. Some functions that I have, this is a class, um, class property functions to quit, to reshuffle, to trigger the game over, to reset a game and all this stuff. Uh, I have my render method here, which uh, uses the state to actually controls everything. And then I, I return a view header. The header is a component that I build the board, which is a component that I built, but as you can see, we're using Vue as we, um, we will use it in React Native. A view is basically like a box of something, right? With, with different capabilities. So I'll go real, real quick to the header. So I can like really explain to you how the header is built, which we have the help bar, the score, the new game button. So I have my index here. Uh, Wait, oh, sorry, header here. So I'm including my, my help bar, my status bar, and I'm building the logo, uh, the help bar, I'm passing over the, the information that I'm getting from the props, uh, but I'm using you know this, the, the React Native syntax. So if I, if I go to help bar, I have my functionality, like if this is a game at the end of the day. So I have functionality. I have this uh, show company update method that handles uh, the, the usage of the, of the help. And um, another thing that it's, it's probably worth to see is the styles. How we're going to style this is uh, object based, um, like, I won't say CSS because it's not CSS, but it's like uh, styling with, with objects. So if I go to the header and I see, okay, I'm including styles from my styles um, file. And I'm using, for example, for the header, I'm just passing the style for, that I'm getting from the header here. And I have like my my norm, my syntax of my object syntax for for CSS or as as I would use it in CSS, you know, an item, justify content, position, display, everything. Uh, we have border color, we have border width, um, positioning, padding, margin, width, height, uh, any any CSS or any uh, properties that you can imagine for styling stuff in web, you can have it in here as well. So you just, you just create a style sheet from the React 360 library. And this style sheet knows how, uh, how to pass all the, the, the styling to the view uh, or the, the components that you have. And um, the, there's a status bar. So yeah, this is a VR button, which is a button like a normal, normal button, you can style it, you can uh, assign an on-click action. And then you have here your, uh, your text uh, for, for, the, for the new game. I mean, this is the new game label. Um, important thing about this is uh, this client.js. Client.js is um, the one that Metro Bundler takes 
to actually do the uh, the composition of the of the WebGL. Basically, what we have here is a surface. It's like uh, yeah, it's, it's something that you have in your uh, like um, in front of you, which is the actual board when the when everything is being rendered, and um, you are inside a cylinder because everything is, you, you can put like in this surface, you can put things like all, all surrounding you and you can render images. You can render uh, in this case, buttons and, and some functionality that you can see that you can use a cubic map as well. I'm using a cylinder because it's a really, really cool way to actually just present things in front of you and do things with these things, right? Like do uh, um, actions with, the, with these things. Uh, this is a React instance that is uh, that it will actually uh, take take care of the rendering and and uh, uh, the Redux connection and everything else. Um, and this is the the composite the compositor is uh, getting the background with uh, a three D image uh, three sixty image sorry that I that I previously downloaded. You can just go to internet. There's a lot of assets uh, with Creative Commons li license. So you can just download it and just render whatever you, you you want as your like background. I remember everything is measured in meters. I will go back to style. So this um, top, this represents uh, of this unit is in meters. So um, one of one thing that you need to take into consideration is um, one meter in front of you probably in real life is like enough but in virtual reality experiences you probably go to <laughs> you need to go further so i'm using a lot of lot of, of meters because of the size of the things that i'm using uh this is more for aesthetic not it's not like uh i, I have it so so far away but it's just for the things looking good so basically this is uh like how you style, how, how you connect your, your React things with the WebGL. And as I mentioned, you have uh, capabilities of getting Eslin to, uh, to control your code quality. You have, you know, Babel or, or RC to uh, include new features for uh, ECMAScript. Um, right now, I'm just including the React Native uh, preset which is helping me out to actually build the whole experience and the x uh, the index that uh, html is for you to actually just control your uh, your title you can do meta things here you can do accessibility you can also include this in your uh, application and also i i build like some scripts to de to deploy uh in case you have just a, a webhook in your repo you just you can also do this, and this is super, super cool because it's an automatically deployed to your server. Um, you can create also tests. Uh, you can create unit tests for your components, do um, um, like uh, snapshot testing as well. So as you can see, this is a classic React project. You can use whatever you would normally use, but you can build immersive experiences and things like for the web, right? At this point, at this moment, any questions so far? So uh, have you tried, uh, like maybe you know, uh, how to like uh, deploy it to the VR headset, for example, to the Oculus, like not the web server, but is it possible to uh, like deploy it to the headset as an application, some sort of, Right, since, since the entry point is an index that HTML, it's difficult to deploy it as uh, in a normal headset. You need to create like a local web server to, or a, like a PWA application-like uh, effort in order to put in, uh, in, a, in the headset, right? Because the entry point is, is, is web at the end of the day. So if you go to your browser in your headset, you will definitely get access to it, but as a standard application, we're still not in that point where the standard can allows that. Thanks. No problem. I'll show you. Oh, I have it in here. 
this is the WebXR. Uh, sorry, um, before I get into this, any other questions? I think that's a no. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the immersive web that immersive web that dev, which is the uh, um, it's a, a simple web page where the consortium is getting some ideas and getting like the um, it's like a summary of the standard. You can see the standard in the uh, W3C page, but this is basically how um, we gather all the resources together. Uh, this guy explains you uh, what's uh, WebXR, uh, how do you, I mean, what's the target for the for this uh, API and the next API. You have some demos, and uh, I think the most important thing in from in this page for me is um, all the the the, the um, uh, tools that you have here. As you can see here, we have a frame from Mozilla. We have React XR. But we also have the Babylon.js, Model Viewer, P5.xr, 3JS, Unity, all the, the, the tools that actually like converge and they work together to get the uh, WebXR standard to work. They're here. So you can just check it out, um, all the tools that you have here. Uh, you have, um, you had a lot of. Uh, chances to build stuff with Unity, for example, or with Unreal or with Maja or Blender. Um, and these 3D models that you can build, you know, your imagination is the limit. You can use those guys in, in, in all the, um, the experience that you built for this specific topic. So it's super cool. Take a look. This is, um, it's not like the most beautiful page in the world, <laughs> but it has a lot of useful information. So this is one of the links that I will share with you. Uh, you can start checking it out. You, you can see actually uh, dinosaurs built for XR, for web XR. This is not Unity. This is not, uh, sorry, this is not like uh, uh, a 3D based uh, platform, like a native platform. This is entirely web. Um, this is the Mozilla Mixed Reality Browser thing. So it's super, super cool that you can, you can have. It's like a museum or something like that. So you have um, 3D panoramas, you have um, like a lot of different showcases of, of the capabilities here. So it's, it's super, super cool. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments? I just want to thank you for such presentation. So as a matter of fact, this topic is pretty fresh for some of us. And in particular, it was interesting for me because I started to uh, investigate the, the like area <laughs> recently. And it was nice to hear that kind of uh, presentation here at the company. So, <laughs> muchas gracias, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, th I mean that's that's the, the whole the, the whole purpose of this to um, get to the to, to the audience into this point that they say, okay, I, only, I need to try it, right? Um, and I'm so I, I'm so um, like convinced that we can get these uh, new technologies in enterprise solutions uh, because th that's where I'm in for, right? In the future, we need to uh, buy stuff. We need to do a lot of stuff that we normally do like in, the, in a like traditional way in, in, in with this type of capabilities. And it's our um, like commitment to bring this technology to the table, to our clients and, and our, our our projects and say, hey, let's do this, let's, let's do that, right? So I, I know this is still fresh, this is still new, we're still like uh, dealing with revisions for the technology and we're, it's like, like transparent into a standard, but eventually we'll get in there. So uh, this is super cool to, to start working on. 
I totally agree that uh, in the near future, this is kind of web that we are going to build. And we can just only imagine what tasks we can receive when the Horizon platform <laughs> release. And uh, maybe we will <laughs> uh, program Definitely. like uh, uh, some kind of solutions <laughs> for that kind of uh, virtual social network. And uh, yeah. Definitely. Right future. <laughs> <laughs> for the future, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Daniel. Really interesting stuff. And I agree that it is fresh and so thanks.